Napoleon, Dmitry Mendeleev, Albert Einstein, Arnold Schwarzenegger and Bill Gates. Do you know what all these people have in common? In fact, they all were good at chess and I think that by the end of my speech I can assure you that chess skills are related to the expectionality. Raise your hand if you can actually play chess and you know something more than just the name uh, of the pieces and basic rules. Not so many hands. However, I bet I can get you interested in chess just in five minutes, because today I reveal some secrets about it and we take a look at chess from another angle. Few words about me. I'm a candidate master in chess and I've been doing it for almost 10 years, and it's pretty much considering the fact that I'm only 17. It's like more than half of my life. And I made friends with lots of chess players and stop. Please stop thinking that all chess players are nerds. If you see chess lover in the street, don't throw stones at him, okay? We're as normal as you guys. Before talking about chess, let's clarify what it is. According to Wikipedia, chess is a board game. However, for me, it's not definitely true. So let's compare chess to mess. There are lots of certain rules and properties in mess which you can apply to solve almost any mess problem. In chess, you have some abstract rules, but in most cases you have to use your creativity to solve problem, because every chess game requires an individual approach. Where do those problems come from? In mess, they come from books and actually all all the tasks are intended to be solved. In chess, you have your opponent in front of you who is challenging you and create, and create all these difficulties for you, and sometimes they don't have any solution. That is why for me, chess is a sport, because you're a rival who is challenging you. It is also science, because playing chess includes some rules and specifications that you should know and understand. And of course, it is art, because you have to use your imagination and therefore create a masterpiece from a match. According to my definition, chess improves competitiveness, critical thinking and creativity, which are needed for everyone to be successful in this world, or at least to survive. According to statistics, over 800 million people play chess regularly in tournaments. This number is comparable to regular users of Facebook. Roughly speaking, every tenth person on the earth is a chess player, but you won't probably believe me because you realize that you hardly have friends or relatives who play chess, and it's reasonable. But the thing is, a huge deal of chess players live in China and India. Despite the fact it's densely populated countries, they are also considered to be chess capitals. Chess actually originated in India and Indians just still honor their traditions. And China, China literally produced their young chess player. They even have chess as a school subject. Why haven't I include Russia? Of course, Russian had been dominated in, in chess world for almost one century and chess was literally worshipped in Soviet Union. However, this fabulous love to chess has gone away with previous generation and now it's not so popular there. So let's get back to numbers. Can you imagine that from almost 1 billion chess players, only 2,000 who achieve Grandmaster, the best title in chess? In percentage term, it's something like this and I'm even afraid to pronounce it. And this number is comparable to the number of people who have anthophobia, the fear of flowers. So you may ask me, why do not so many people achieve it? What the problem? First of all, like any other sport, chess takes a lot of time. You have to practice from three to five, even, and even eight hours in a day for 15 years to take care of chess. And then you really get chances to become a nerd, you know, like with big round glasses, ham on the back and crazy head. Not everyone is ready for it. Secondly, plenty of people just benefit from chess everything they need and use it like a tool for their whole life. Because there are lots of life problems that can be compared to chess problems that can be solved using the same consideration. For instance, you got this trivial problem. You have to get from point A to point B, but there is a puddle. And you have surveillance and you start to analyze, like in chess game. If you go by red pass, you, of course, you come around the puddle, but you get into sledge. As for black one, it's the shortest way. You don't want to be wet, though. Therefore, yellow pass is an answer. Of course, it's extremely straightforward, and in real life, your brain does it like for one second. But chess analyzing approach is also usable for more complicated problems, 
like from creating a business plan and running a country to entangle your handphones. However, all that I said was extremely abstract, and now I try to give a certain advice on do playing chess. Plenty of people think that you have to buy chess boards and chess pieces to start doing chess, however, it's not definitely true. Technology of the 21st century provides lots of opportunity to play chess by playing your computer or smartphone. But there's more romance with real wooden boards and sound of knocking pieces. It can be compared to ebook and paper book. But all in all, it's up to you what to choose. And if you don't want to bother yourself with buying chess boards, chess pieces, chess books, you better serve the internet and find the platform where you can play and practice. You literally can Google Play Chess and the first three sites will help you. In general, they all are similar by their content. But you may ask me, how can I win all my games? Okay, let's move to practical tips. Tip number one, make sure that you know chess rules. You would be probably surprised that hundreds of chess players who played hundreds of games don't know the basic rules of castling or and passant. Tip number two, solve chess puzzles. All platforms provide them, it improves your ability to calculate and see a few moves ahead. Tip number three, analyze your blunders. All chess platforms also provide the data where you can check the reason why you have failed your game. Tip number four, think twice before making a move. Don't be scared to spend a lot of time, it prevents you from silly mistakes. And finally, have fun. Have, and have fun even if, if you lose your game. By the way, you get even more benefit from losing than from winning. Because when you win, you do something like, you who I'm the best chess player in the world, give me my crown. But when you lose, you're actually not so enthusiastic, but you feel that you have some space for improvement. That is what's actually making you better. I think enough for you to pour over the chess world, but be careful. Be careful because it can absorb you completely. Because personally, I have two friends who start playing chess because of my advice and now they're completely addicted to it. I even feel, you know, some kind of guilty. I went in for the moment one of their mom will call me and say something like, what did you do with our son? He was a normal boy, but now he's playing chess because of you. Terrible station. However, for me, it's one of the addictions that even useful. I wouldn't even call it addiction because I've never seen a chess player who commit a crime for a dose of chess. And now, I want you to think about the list of people that was in the beginning of my speech. And I'm, I don't want to say that it's, it's, like, it's only about chess, that ex the exceptionality is only about chess, of course not. But it helped them. It helped them to become who they are and it can help you to achieve your goals and to be on the par with them. And if I were you, I wouldn't miss a chance to play chess. Play chess and become new Bill Gates, everything in your hands. And while you're thinking about playing chess or not, some listeners have already started to play. Don't let them overtake you in chess. Go for it. Thank you.